Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. This is the Kin 2. It's a Microsoft Zune phone, supposedly the dream phone for anyone that's constantly social networking. So does it live up to all of its expectations? Well, right off the bat, I'm going to say that in some ways it performs great, and in some ways it's kind of disappointing, and it's one of those phones that almost needs to be a smartphone in order to do everything that it says it does. And to be honest, as a phone, I think it's great. It has a great web browser, has an awesome email client, I think, has a camera that shoots HD video, a QWERTY keyboard that I think was great to use. But as a social networking device, it was kind of a pain to use, which made it even more frustrating considering that it's made specifically for that purpose, and yet I personally couldn't get used to how those uh, features functioned. But again, that's just my personal opinion. I'm going to give you guys a full review and overview so you can see how everything works and see if it's something that, that maybe you could get used to. But anyway, this is the Ken 2, and I'm sorry guys if this is a little bit late. I've had a cold for a while, and I was going to try to wait until I got completely over it before I did a video. Um, so I, I think I'm okay now, but I'm sorry if this is a little bit later than I would have liked for it to be. But anyway, Microsoft Ken 2. I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. Let's go check it out. So this is the Ken 2, and it's, uh, you know, like I said, overall, I think it's a great phone. Just when it came to social networking, I had a few problems, and we'll get into that, you know, in more detail in just a little bit. But basically, first of all, the hardware, it's, you know, it's a pretty nice phone. It has a 3.4-inch capacitive touchscreen, so, you know, you're not really going to have any problems in terms of scrolling. I thought the screen was great. It also supports multi-touch, which is very cool. And uh, the screen itself is 3.4 inches, like I said, and has a resolution of 320 by 480. So it's a pretty good screen. And then you've got the QWERTY keyboard here, which I thought was also really great. The only thing that I had a problem with is that there's so much empty space around here. Uh, I just don't like the way that it looks. And I think it, to me, it looks kind of cheap uh, just because there is so much blank space. And also, I guess it's just the way that the keys are shaped in that circular uh, way. It, I just, I don't personally like the way that it looks. And, uh, you know, other than that, it worked great. The other thing that I had to get used to was that the only punctuation that has its own key is the period. If you want to get to the comma, the question mark, the exclamation mark, anything else, you have to use the function key, which sort of, you know, I would prefer to have more keys, at least a comma or a question mark. And I think they easily could have done that considering how much space there is right here. But they didn't for whatever reason, and it, you know you'll get used to it. it. Has a dedicated emoticon key, so you know it's made for the people that text message all this time. So I guess maybe that's what they prefer the most. And then the extra long space bar, which is pretty cool. Uh, another thing, sort of, was that the sliding mechanism on the keyboard was just a little bit too loose, which became a problem. Uh, for example, if you're going to take a picture the capture button is right there and if you're just holding the phone like this to take a picture you can see it kinda slides like that if you want to push down um, also if you want to try to get a good grip on it, it is sometimes difficult because it, it kind of slides around so it you kind of sometimes feel like it's gonna slip out of your hand because you can't get a good get a good grip on it um, that might just be the device that I have but it is something that created a problem Moving along to, it has its own UI, which is different, and you can see you've got three basic home screens here, but these can't be changed. It's automatically your main menu, basically, and then your feeds. This is my Twitter feed, and then uh, your favorite contacts. And I like it overall. It's not really that difficult to get used to. And uh, it's nice having just a, your own screen. You don't have to go through all these menus to get to Twitter or Facebook or MySpace as you just slide over. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also change the main color if you go to settings here. I have no idea why the icon for settings is an airplane. Um, obviously, airplane is one of the settings within settings, but I wouldn't automatically associate an airplane with settings. But anyway, they did. So, um, But yeah, you can change the... Um, the theme, you can choose different colors, uh, that's pretty cool. There's a few other things that you can change, the sound, obviously the ringtone. And then in this main menu here, you can rearrange these tiles. If you do a double hold, you can see it kind of changed the size of them, and then you can move them around. So that's pretty cool. Another thing that you can do is um, you can set the unlock uh, screen. So see if you push that button. This is a picture that I took, but you can set any picture for that, and then you just slide up 
Now another sort of, it's not quite new, um, but I like the way that it's been implemented is this search function. You can use it to search your phone for any contacts or apps, but the things that come in most handy is the web search, which of course we've seen before, and also the yellow pages or being near me search. You know, we've seen these before, but just, I guess that it's so easy to, to get to and the way that it works, and maybe not on a feature phone would it be, um, would it be this accommodating, you know, or such a big feature. Usually this is something that you would see on a smartphone, but it's really nice to use because especially whenever you get to using the Ken Spot, which I'll get into in just a little bit, but just to show you this feature, um, say you want to search near you or near me, Starbucks. Books. And then I'll find the one that's closest to you, and you can you can uh, see the phone number, you can see maps or get directions. So we'll choose this one, and then it'll take me to a map. And say I want to meet somebody there for coffee, or you know maybe meet someone before a movie or something. I can just take this whole page. I also could have done that uh, with just the listing by itself, but I can take this whole page, drag it to the kin spot, open that, and then I can send this uh, via text or email, and then I can say, hey, let's meet here for coffee, and it's really simple. <clears throat> So I think the search fe feature is actually pretty cool. I think it's something that, that you'd use a lot, especially, you know, even the, um, the web search function. So now moving on to the, uh, the social aspect of the phone. You can see you've got messaging, email, your feed reader. I thought the messaging interface was great. And one of the cool things is, is that if, you, um, if your phone's just sitting on idle and you get a new message, it will show up in your um, lock screen. It'll show up as a little speech bubble right here, and it'll say um, part of the message, and then if you have multiple messages from that same person, it'll show you how many messages you have. So that's actually a pretty cool feature. The messaging interface was great. So and then the email client. I think that the email client for the Kin is one of the greatest, especially for a feature phone. Just the way that it, it functions, the way that it looks, the way messages show up, I really, really like it. I'll go to the email client right now, show you just one cool feature about it. If you have multiple accounts, uh, say for example, I have two accounts, so I can set both of them up whenever I, um, whenever I first get the phone, and then I can just slide through really easily. And it just makes it so easy, instead of having to go back to a menu, choose that account, and then you know see the emails for that one, which is a lot of times what you have to do with a feature phone, you can just slide through and see all of them. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. Okay, so now we'll talk about the main you know shebang about the phone, is the social networking. And you can see here I've got my Twitter account, I'm all logged in, you can see my feed. And while this is nice having it just you know right here on this home screen, the only bad thing about it is that this page only updates every 15 minutes and uh, you, and you can't change that. Another thing that I don't like about it is that if you want to reply to a tweet, then you have to actually open the tweet in a web browser and then sign in through the browser and then reply to that tweet just using you know regular web browsing which to me it kind of defeats the purpose of having this in the first place I mean yeah it's nice to be able to read the tweets but what if I want to actually respond to it you know you'd have to go here type a new message you'd have to type their name out, which can kind of be a pain, or say you want to retweet something, you'd have to type the whole message unless you go to the web browser. I just think that while this is nice, I mean, I wouldn't figure that this would be for somebody who is constantly social networking because, you know, they obviously would be using functions like retweeting or replying, which you really can't do from this page. You have to go to the web browser. Now there is the now you know I talked about the problem of that this only refreshes every 15 minutes. You can actually go to your feed reader, and you can set up as a feed your Twitter uh, or MySpace and Facebook. You can do the same thing in that home screen I was just, and you can set up other accounts too. But in this actual feed reader, it's nicer because you can um, you can manually update it here. So whereas before in the home page it was only every 15 minutes, here you can choose to. Um, here you can choose to automatically um, sync it or update it. So you can see there's the refresh button right there, and you can just refresh it. 
So that's nice, but from this feed reader, you can't actually type tweets. So you can't do anything from here. You can't you can't type a tweet, you can't reply, you can't retweet. The only thing you can do from here is actually read the tweets. And then say you're reading it and you want to say something or you want to reply, you have to go back to the main screen here and type it, which again you're going to have the problem of if you can't actually reply to tweets from here. And if that tweet hasn't shown up yet in this page because it only refreshes every 15 minutes, I mean basically the phone for me, using Twitter and social networking was an absolute pain because it's almost like they don't want you to actually do anything. They just want you to read tweets, which I want to do more than that. I want to actually connect with people. So, you know, that's me, and, and I think that the phone's great, but as social networking, it was, it was horrible to use. I eventually just gave up and started using my computer or another smartphone they had, I have. So... Yeah.